What is up, worship leaders? My name is Dalton Schaefer. Welcome back to the channel, Spirit Truth. Today, I wanna to talk about tips for how you can improve your worship leading by next week. And before we jump in, I've actually already made another video where I talk about how you can improve your worship leading by tomorrow. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'm going to link it right here and put it in the description. I encourage you to go watch that video. These things build on one another. So if you want to continue to grow, check that video out, then come back and watch this video. Let's jump in. The first tip for how you can improve your worship leading by next week is to plan your worship set earlier in the week and get all of the resources that your team needs to them as early as possible. So what that looks like for me most of the time is I like to plan my set one week in advance. And so if Sunday's coming that Monday, six days before, I'm going to finalize my set sometime by the early afternoon. I'm going to try to have all of the recordings and chord charts and resources out to my team by that Monday. And by doing this, it gives the team plenty of time to prepare before the midweek rehearsal. But with that, I don't keep a huge list of songs. And so uh, if your song list is maybe 50, 60, 100 songs, you may need to get your stuff out earlier just so they know which songs to be preparing. But I keep a list of about 30 to 40 songs at any given moment. And that makes it a lot easier for our team to be able to prepare. Tip number two is to craft your worship set with the pastor's sermon in mind. And so I encourage you, if you don't already know what your pastor is preaching on, maybe every week it's just kind of guessing, okay, I don't know where they're going. I would just set up a standing meeting with your pastor to ask them what they're going to be teaching on. And maybe if they're going through a sermon series, it can be easier. You can get a meeting and you learn, oh, the next four weeks, here's where we're going. But I would encourage you make time to get with your pastor, know where they're going to go with the sermon so that you can plan your set accordingly. And that doesn't mean that Every single song has to be exactly on what they're teaching about, but I think it can be helpful to have maybe one or two songs that really tie in closely. And so I'm actually a big fan of planning your set around a gospel narrative or what I call a gospel liturgy. And basically that's where you think through these categories of praise and adoration, confession of sin, assurance of pardon, what Christ has done in his death and resurrection, what that means for us and our response to that truth. And I've actually made another video where I talk about that more in depth and I'll link that right here. But it can be really helpful if one of those songs ties in really closely with the passage that your pastor is going to be preaching on. Tip number three is to prepare. When you plan your set earlier in the week, it gives you several days to really spend with the songs. And I encourage you, if you're not already doing this, to memorize your lyrics and chord charts. Maybe you think you don't have time, and I just wanna encourage you, it is much easier than you might think. In fact, the first few weeks may take a little bit of time, but by the time you've been doing this for a year, most songs you can memorize with very minimal effort. But I encourage you, take the time to memorize your chords, memorize your lyrics. That way, when you're leading people in worship, you're not just trying to get through the songs, you're not just trying to get the right chords and not mess up the words, but you're able to actually lead your church in worship to look out and see, what are my people doing in response? Are they connecting? What can I do to maybe shift the way that I'm leading them to engage them more in that moment. I think it will help you tremendously in your worship leading to just memorize your music. And tip number four is to do vocal warmups. You might be surprised to find out how much improvement you can experience after just five days of doing maybe 10 minutes a day of vocal warmups. It's going to help your pitch. It's going to help your endurance. It's going to help your tone. If you're someone who struggles with any of those things or you find yourself after a rehearsal in two services on Sunday, maybe you're consistently losing your voice, then vocal exercises and vocal warmups are going to be a huge help to you because it's not just about sounding really good, but we want to steward our voices to the glory of God. And we don't want to be limited on how long we can serve the Lord in ministry just because we didn't take care of our voices. 
Tip number five is don't just think about the music. Look for the opportunities in your worship set to read a scripture or to lead your people in a pastoral prayer or to find a moment for a corporate reading. But think about all the ways that you can lead your church and engage your church more deeply apart from just singing at them. What I found, at least in the context that I've led at in the last seven years, is the moments where you stop singing and you address your congregation with the word of God open can be some of the most important and powerful moments of calling people into deeper, more true, authentic worship. So don't just sing songs at your people, but engage your people with your words, with the scriptures, with prayers, and watch how the Lord uses that to help you lead your people more faithfully. And the last tip that I have is to run through your set during the week, not for practice, but to actually worship the Lord. I encourage you to find some time to block off and just worship with the songs that you're going to be leading. I found in my own life that during the week, maybe going into the lobby of our church by myself and singing through some of these songs, one, I have some really powerful personal moments of worship where I'm not worshiping in front of people, but I'm worshiping in the secret places. I'm not doing it for a congregation or an audience. I'm just doing it to spend time with the Lord. And what I've found is a lot of times the Lord will bring scriptures to mind or prompt things that I'll begin to think about. Like I might need to say something during this part of the song to engage my people, to lead them in that moment. And so I encourage you, find time to just worship the Lord with the songs that you're going to lead on Sunday and watch how the Lord ministers to you and prepares you to lead your people better. So those were my tips on how you can improve your worship leading by next week. If you found this helpful, would you like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the videos that I release. As always, we want to continue to lead our churches and lead our teams in biblically formed worship in spirit and truth. That's the kind of worship that the Father's seeking, and that's the kind of worship that we want to bring to him. So I will see you guys in the next video.